Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. It's Thursday, July 29th, even though the agenda is July 1st, it's 29th. This is the Policy and Procedure Committee. We'll call the roll, please. Sure. Yes. Baron? Yes. Alt? Yes. R? Yes. Young? Yes. Hey, got a copy of the agenda in front of you. Is there a motion to approve? Young, is there a second? Mr. Byard. Any questions or comments regarding the agenda? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Do we have any public comments today? Now we'll move to the committee chair reports. Mr. Barrett, Management Services and Judicial. Management, we will be opening bids for farm rent for lease or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's going to be the main thing. Uh, judicial should be just regular report. Has there been any response to that letter that was sent out on the farm about? Yes. Um, they, uh, she actually called me and said that, uh, the one tile that was pointed out to them has been fixed as had others over the years. Uh, so she, she had it all in a report that they kept on their file. She was going to send it to Amanda. Okay. All right. Um. That's good. Mr. Bard, tax, zoning committee. The department heads will make the regular reports. Mr. Yergler has informed me that the building permit discussion will be on the September agenda, and Mrs. Crawford has said she might have some comments to make on the uh, homestead project we're trying to get underway. Okay. Mr. Alt, do you have any information about the Finance Committee? We had hearings in the last two days. They were on schedule, I guess, to continue at, the, at our Finance Committee meeting. Okay. I know a little more than that. Very good. Young IT. I'll just continue to work on the AT&T contract. Have we had any bits of our information on about those phones? I'm not seeing anything from Michael Taylor. Have you? No. Okay. We'll have to reach out to him and see if. Mr. Alt, I like. He was here today. He missed the claims, but I don't think there's anything else, right? Not right at the moment. So, no potholes in the county? Oh, well, there's plenty of those. <laughs> <laughs> it rained, didn't it? What? It rained, didn't it? We got a pothole and then it rained. Not doing any striking? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're complaining about it because we ought to be handing out uh, bars of soap right now. <laughs> okay, very good. Right? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Sacy, EMA. Over the past month, work has included uh, working on a hazard mitigation plan. Uh, EMA had a booth at a fair. We share that with the um, Hickory County Amateur Radio Club. Uh, we gave out four weather radios during the fair, and we gave out a lot. I pushed a lot of the hyper reach pamphlets. We probably gave out 150 of those. Um, during that time, though, we had the pipeline incident. Someone hit the Marathon pipeline to go through Hickory County. A 12 inch pipeline that was probably in around four to 700 psi. It was pulling gasoline at the time. 1,200 barrels of gasoline were leaked. Uh, so we've been working with Marathon on that. Um, no lives were put into danger, no one got hurt. 
So that's the good news. Um, environmental impact that, in my opinion, kept to a minimum considering what was leaked. I had never gone to Spring Creek uh, and they are testing for that regularly. So that's the good news. Um, continuing work with the Illinois EPA and Marathon as uh, soil cleanup continues to go on. Bad news is for the people that caused the leak. Yes, but that's that's between Marathon and them. Something that often happens with large industrial accidents: um, the owner of the product, whether it's Marathon with the pipeline, or um, or whether it's a rail, you know, CSX, and someone you know, somehow derailed the train and there's been a large hat on because of that, but it wasn't the rail's fault. The owner of the product takes control of the scene and they do whatever they have to. And they work with the regulatory authority, regulatory authorities to make sure whatever has to be done gets done. And then later, after all is said and done, lawyers wash it out of court. So I'm not a part of that. I understand. Twelve hundred barrels, not gallon. Correct. Oh, yeah. uh, let's see. Fair pipeline. I will. I will just to go back to that for a minute, or say that uh, I happened to be at the fair the evening when this happened, and on my way home, it was there. It was a very quick response to the to the incident, which I think helped greatly as far as keeping it from getting any worse than it was. So. Marathon immediately set up a command post nearby Monsica and they brought in 130 workers, build our local hotels, and they brought in heavy machinery from Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, neighboring states, Missouri, wherever they could get it where they already had contracts. They built roads out into the field. They, this wasn't their first show. And it was impressive. I've had larger environmental impacts from smaller spills because they weren't handled like marathon handles. So that's what it's Let's see. Moving forward, continue work on the hazard mitigation plan. The federal government has started a series, a webinar series on mitigation. Um, programs and grants and whatnot. So I have been, um, the first one was yesterday and they got a series on that going forward. So I'm going to be attending those just to keep up to date on what's happening and what's available on the federal side. Uh, we have an LEPC meeting coming up next week on the 5th of August. Probably be talking about an exercise that we're going to probably be planning here soon and a couple other things. Uh, I'm working on getting a couple other trainings lined up including the hazard, hazardous material awareness course in December and possibly a aircraft <coughs> course uh, in the next couple of months. That will be simulated. Simulated? Won't be actual. You're not going to crash an airplane. We're not even going to simulate. We're just going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any plans to crash an aircraft. No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to offer a couple more hyper reach to fire chiefs and police chiefs in the next month on the 17th and 24th of August that allows them, gives them access to the system so they can send an emergency alerts to their jurisdiction as well. We've gotten a few fire chiefs already trained and signed up um, and I've had to use the system a few times over the past month. It's definitely proven to be worth uh, what we're putting into it. And I'll be turning in a biannual training exercise plan to the state today. Basically, got to submit to the state what kind of training and exercises we need, we plan on conducting over the next four years to meet our core capability requirements for the FEMA. So, that's what EMA is up to. Any questions? Thank you very much, Eric. Next on our agenda is the continuing discussions regarding the Redistricting for the county board and setting the salaries, which is required to be completed by November 17th. Change that on your agenda to November 17th.
Okay. Gave each one of you a copy of the ordinance that uh, one one is the ordinance that we I believe agreed upon at the last board meeting, resetting the salary for the county board chairman at four hundred dollars a month. Everything else in that ordinance is the same as what was previously decided. The other one contains the things that we had initially agreed upon several months ago, reducing the number to 16, which would be four county board members in each district, and then the salaries that were agreed upon that time at $50 per diem for the board members, $90 a month for the vice chairman, and $600 a month for the chairman. I'm not really sure exactly what the wishes of the committee is, but this is kind of where, where we're, the point where we've gotten to and we need to make some decisions today to what we want to present to the board at the meeting uh, coming up. So open for a discussion. Kenny, you wish to speak? Uh, yes, and thanks again for, you know, the board meeting, let me know if you had the questions about the policy that we'll discuss right now, the reapportionment and compensation for having me come, you know, saying, hey, we should do that here. I appreciate that. Um, I see only two options that you guys are discussing, and I wondered if, because uh, there's a few other options that are available to us, uh, if that had been other options such as one deciding that the current compensation apportionment is still appropriate and then just submit to the state we'll keep it as is um, these not, two had already been we're not submitting this to the state Mr. or excuse me not the state but we're reporting it leaving it as is the other okay, two, that's one of the options i just presented to the committee i'm just going through all the different ones also, there's, um, we've already had where you increase uh, the pay, or, or the other one that we voted on was about leaving the pay the same compensation, but decreasing the board, which those have gotten defeated. That's why we're back here. Um, have you considered or thought about uh, something that might, um, <clears throat> besides just leaving it as is, that would maybe benefit and, and might create some buy-in with some of the other uh, board members not saying that i would agree with this one or not but an option of if we want to benefit the county and we think that a lower amount of people is a benefit well what about reducing the number of board members and reducing the compensation i mean i don't think any of us live or die on what we get when we come here whether it's per diem or regular compensation that if we were voluntarily saying hey let's reduce by x amount uh, maybe make the per diem a flat weight, maybe make up, and then I'll reduce, say, for 35 back to whatever it was, 25. Um, that would, if we reduce the numbers and reduced the compensation, then I think that would be, that would definitely benefit the county. It might be a sell for some, and it would definitely be something that um, would send, I think, a good message to the constituents. Or we could leave the county board number at the same, but voluntarily reduce our own compensation uh, per diem and uh, when we show up <clears throat> to show that we are trying to be more fiscally responsible and save the county some money has any of those besides the one been uh, talked about i can't tell you exactly the amount of time that we spent talking on any of those things but i kind of i believe we've considered them so the only things on the table that i'm seeing are leave it the same increase the compensation while leaving the board the same or reducing the number of the board but increasing the compensation do i understand that correctly or incorrectly no i don't think you do okay could you, uh, feel free to correct the one the one option is to leave everything exactly as it is right now right. okay mm -hmm. the other option is to reduce the number of the board members and increase the compensation okay so the 400 dollars per chairman that's not a change then I'm, that's it. That's what the you get. I'm and the asking. option to keep things exactly the same, the chairman's compensation would be four hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was my one misunderstanding. So I wasn't sure I must have it wrong. All right. 
That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. I guess I guess to answer some of the some of the questions or points you made, uh, I think the reason reasoning behind reducing the number of board members and increasing the compensation was partly to to uh, recognize the fact that uh, this is you know we've been in, in where we are at we've been there for ten years what we're putting together is for the next ten years correct. It's hard to foresee what's going to happen in the next 10 years. But one thing that seems certain that we're going to enter into a, a period of, a, of somewhat aggressive inflation. And I mean, there's just no way that the federal government can give out $11 trillion without it causing some serious problems to the economy. I don't think any common sense person would disagree with that. So that's part of it. That's part of thought behind increasing the compensation is to try and keep pace with some of that. Also, if you recall, in, our, in one of our earlier county board meetings, Mrs. Crow pointed out that 10 years ago, the compensation for board members of per diem was $50. So if we were to increase it to $50 now, we're just going back to what we had 10 years ago. Well, I'm, I'm not for an increase, but I, I mean, I'm listening to you. OK, well, I'm, I'm explaining. What you know? What the thought is behind some of the things that we have here? Okay. Um, so reduction though wasn't part of it. So reduction, just a voluntary reduction on the board, just that would say no board months. member is required to take the per diem. If you, for example, if you want, if you don't want to take your per diem, you don't have to. Okay. There is a board member right now that I'll tell you that doesn't. Fair enough. He's never turned in the claim for any expenses in the whole time he's been on the board. You have that right. You're not forced to take the money. Absolutely true. So if you don't wish to take the money, that's fine. Those that do have that opportunity, and that, that was part of the reason behind this. As far as the other part is concerned, the salary for the chairman seems to be one of the key ingredients. And I can tell you that even though I can't predict how much longer I would be the chairman, whoever is the chairman after me, if they're going to do some of the things that are required of the chairman, $400 a month, don't cut it. That may be true. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not privy to everything that goes on. So, okay. Well, if you're not, it's hard to make an intelligent decision, isn't it? Say again. I, I know what goes on. I'm pretty, I, I, I know better since you are the chairman. I think I know better than anyone what it takes to be the chairman and to run the, and the duties of the chairman. Sure, and, and I'm also recall that you didn't think it was appropriate to increase it, so you just said that it No, no, that's not correct. The, the last board, didn't you say no. that that increase to 600 no. was inappropriate? No, I didn't say that. Okay. What, what I, was it you were saying was inappropriate? I must have misunderstood. What I said was that if we kept the number of board members at 20 mm -hmm. and the per diem at 35 <clears throat> if you increase the cost this chairman's salary you're increasing the cost of operating the board the plan the plan that we put together to reduce it to 16 is budget neutral well that i've got yes yeah. it's not going to cost the county any more money if you increase the chairman's salary and don't make any other changes you're increasing the cost of operating the board. Right. I understand that. I just want to make sure I was understanding what part you were objecting to. Okay, I'll get it. So, I mean, those are the parameters that we're operating in. I'm, I'm certainly open to anything that the committee wants to do and anything that the board wants to do. It's not my decision, it's a board decision. I'm presenting my views and my rationale for the things that I would recommend things that are here aren't necessarily what I recommended. This is what the committee agreed upon. The I committee just, I just appreciate the time to the committee presented their straight. findings to the board and the board completely dismantled them. So and, and in essence the board said to the committee, we don't care about you guys. You know, I mean that well, I don't know if it's we don't care, maybe just disagree. I mean Well, our point is who knows better? All of the, each of the committees that we have 
we respect their findings when we have a board meeting because we give them the opportunity to thoroughly investigate a matter and bring their decision before the board. Yes, there are times when there may be some disagreement, but in general, that's why we have committees. I understand that's why we, in general, have committees. And yes, sometimes there's disagreement because I'm pretty sure that most people aren't just going to rubber stamp everything. So uh, I'm, I not, uh, I'm not looking for rubber stamps. Okay, so where Thank does you all, for me, uh, where does all this leave us? Here we got we got uh, what I presented here today is just a summation of what we've done so far. We've got, we've got two different things. We can change these. We can we can present both of these to the board. We can present one of them to the board again. One. We need to do something. Fortunately, the state has extended the. the, the deadline on this until November, but we need to get something done. We just can't keep kicking the can down the road. Mr. Bard? Yes, I believe you also said there was a possibility of combining two committees into one. That was part of the part of what associated with this plan yeah, as far as right. how we would be able to keep it as being budget neutral. Right. There's, there's, couple of examples of where I think we can make some changes like that that will not impair the function of the board in any way mm -hmm. and may improve it. For example, if we combine the finance committee and the IT committee, they meet the same day, back to back, it's essentially the same people <coughs> and <clears throat> the functions are very similar. There's no reason it can't all be done in, yeah. under the auspices of one committee. Yeah, same as it might mean the committee meeting might go 10 or 15 minutes longer, but I mean, yeah. you wouldn't go through the rigmarole of all the things associated with beginning the meeting and having separate minutes. Sure. At the board meeting, you then wouldn't have separate minutes. And I mean, there's just some benefits of that sort that, that I think, are, from a standpoint of bringing the board from where it was 10 years ago into today and, and beyond. We have things today, for example, in the way of communication tools that we didn't have 10 years ago. We have, we have a lot of things today that, that enable us to do things better and easier than we could 10 years ago. So some of the things that we're talking about here would, would you know, dovetail into that. Charlie? Well, I think if you ran a study how many board members in the county will be all over the board. I mean, some counties have a large number of, of larger than us, others have less, and the population in that county doesn't seem to hold with any direction in that, those figures, I feel. Yet, in our county, we're, we're lower population than we were 10 years ago, no doubt about it. So that's the reason why I feel we could do it with a few less members on the board were probably still higher than the average of the small population counties in the state. And, and, and that's a good point. I do think, I do think though, that you also need to consider what, how many people does it take to run to make decisions and, and take care of the business of the county? Well, it seems Some to me committees. the more people you have, probably the more you should have as a board member, but the lesser ones you wouldn't need as many. That would be logic to me. Kentucky County has 28 members on their board. And the reason they have that, I can I can tell you for a fact, I know the board, county board chairman pretty well up there. The reason they have 28 board members is because they have single member districts. That means they have 28 yeah. county board districts, that one member from each right. district. Mm -hmm. And he, and he, I don't know what the right adjective is. I don't want to say desperate, but he, he wants to get away from that, but he can't. I understand. I would like to get away from that too if I were him. It right. right. doesn't make any sense, really. I mean, he's trying to, he's trying to re, reconfigure all those districts right now on the population. That's, that's a nightmare. I don't know how else to say it. I don't want us to see go that through that route. No, I don't easy. either. But, uh, and the thing is, if we don't get something done here as a board, 
by the deadline in November, then it goes to this commission, which consists of the county clerk, the state's attorney, and the chairman of the Republican Party, the chairman of the Democratic Party, and somebody from the attorney general's office. They're the ones that will tell us what it will be. And what it will be, and what it will have to be, is 29 board members. Well, I don't think we want to put her in position ourselves in that position. Oh, I agree. But we need to keep in mind that that's the other side of the coin, or that's, you know, that's what we're up against. But our experience should tell us what we should do here, in my opinion. We've had uh, board, co board County, for example, is a smaller county. That's true, but they have 12 board members. The, the business that they do there, it may not be in dollars and cents the same, but is it, is it that much different from here? Their 12 board members seem to do fine. Why do we need 20 if they can do it with 12? I don't know how you, you know, how, how do you rationalize that? How many districts do they have in Port County, John? I think they have three. Or we did have four. four <coughs> it's either three and four or four and three. One of yeah. two. <laughs> but I think it's three. I could be wrong. I have to admit it's the oddest shaped county I've ever seen. It was the last, wasn't it the last county you formed in the state? Yeah, nobody it was the remains that nobody else wanted them, I guess. Or something. <laughs> but anyway, the point is simply that's an example of a uh, a neighboring county that's somewhat similar to us, except in not only in size and population, and you know they have they have the same many of the same issues that we do, and, and twelve people seems to get it done. I don't know why why you can say we need twenty. To me, you know, to me sixteen is, is more than enough. I've even there's some even officials that I've talked to here in our county that thought twelve would be number we should have but that's all you that just tells you as you're saying you can talk to everybody in the county and come probably get a different number trying to get a consensus is not going to be easy and that probably is illustrated just in the conversations we had in the board meeting where, where we had such a divergence of opinion the one argument I heard is we need more discussion we got our committees. You can come to our meetings, whether you're not even on the board. Yeah, all right, that, and there's Mr. Penny. I'm happy that he's here today sure. because so it gives him an opportunity not only to express his views, either the committee or but he gets an opportunity to see the, yeah. the discussion that we're having and maybe to understand things a little bit better. For example, at, at one of the meetings when we talked, the board meetings when we talked about this, one of the gentlemen got up and and uh, he said we used to have 30 board members. Well, that's not correct. We, we had 25, but he also talked about representation in the rural areas and why you needed more board members and so forth. There's, the, the fact of the matter is that there is nothing that we can do in any county board district to mandate that a certain number of board members have to be in the rural areas and a certain number have to be in the urban areas. That's up to each district to the people that are going to run and where they're, whether they live in the rural area or the urban area. Right now, for example, we have three board members from System Park. And you're three out of the five. So, you know, I mean, that's, is that equal distribution? That's, that's the people in your district that chose to run for the board. Same thing here in Watsika. We have... I think four out of the five that live in uh, re representing Watsika itself. So, I um, mean, there's in District One. I, I think everybody's from a rural area, are they not? So, uh, but this is the choice that the voters in the district, yeah, and the candidates themselves, have to make. This that, isn't something that the board can mandate or determine by the number of board members that we decide upon. Yeah, it changes every so often depending on who is elected. Exactly. And it, it just, that's, it's just not a valid argument in my opinion, but I think it's a point that was made of something we need to talk about because we need to understand is it, is it valid or not. We have to make that each of us that decision ourselves. 
I think there's a point to be made for having representation from rural areas and as well as the towns. That's that's true, but uh, it's up to the, it's up to the people in any district to decide you know, about putting candidates for. It. That's what elections are all about. So to get back to to get back to this again, I you know I think the decision that we're looking at today is do we want to do we want to present to the board at the next board meeting both of these plans, one of them or none of them. Obviously, whatever we present, there'll be a somewhat of a prolonged discussion. If you <laughs> offer no plan, it's going to be forever. Uh, I'm not in favor. We won't settle it during not, that meeting. I'll assure you. Not in favor of offering no plan. I mean, <laughs> if we offer even one plan, at least gets the discussion started. Yeah. And, uh, offering two plans provides somewhat of a choice. And as I said, you know, either one of these can be modified. This is what we looked at thus far, and that's kind of why I brought them this way to the committee this morning. I don't think it's any secret that I favor the one with 16 board members because I think that's a way in which the board is making progress as we look at society today and look at the needs of the county today and how we can best meet those as well as you know I mean the point that Mr. Penny made about compensation I, I agree it's not earth shattering but it's a, it's some indication on the part of the county and the people in the county as to the worth of the board and it is traditional that board members get compensated for their for their service. And may I comment Mr. Penny? Sure may not apply but prior to 10 years ago it was at one time hundred dollars a meeting and they voluntarily came to 50. Oh, that's the start of, I think it was at the start of 10 years ago and then we were in financial trouble and they voluntarily went to 25. Uh, that's that's really good to hear I mean you know I'm not against good compensation I mean we do do a service but that's really good. thank you for sharing that I think that's pretty that's pretty good to know. It's been coming now. Uh, I, I understand and thank you. I didn't and know. Inflation tells me it's even coming down more. Yeah. Very very much very well good. But uh, no, that's good. That, that's a good to hear. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. One, sure. one thing that compensation also can provide, it depends a lot on the individual, but oftentimes some of the work of the board requires some time being spent on, on research or whatever outside of the committee meeting itself so that when you come to the committee meeting or the board meeting, you're prepared. And <laughs> I'm, I'm that, time is, that time isn't compensated. That, that's, that time isn't compensated. So if you look at your compensation for your meeting and say, well, that partially covers the time I have to spend getting ready for it. Well, no, I understand. And I'm not saying that it needs to go down. I was just submitting the concept. Um, so, some might even say that as low as it is, it's amazing. You know that it's gone down so much because um, well you know the labor is worth is higher and there is a lot of work that's done outside in preparation so I agree it's you know it's a compensation should be fair I'm not, I'm not disputing that and to me interview. the fact that we're making if the plan makes it budget neutral ought, ought to be something that would avoid criticism from the public as far as saying it's self-serving or, or that we're I agree just leave it as it is budget neutral doesn't change. I can see that. I'll give him an example of what he might be assigned on the outside for a committee. I was assigned to find out what it would cost us to go to uh, hiring uh, or buying our own lawnmowers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, two of us went around several days getting estimate costs of mowers and stuff like that, and operating them and that type of thing. We weren't compensated for that. I don't feel bad about it at all. If I, wouldn't, if I was part of it, I wouldn't have either. I, I'm not saying the compensation is wrong or inappropriate. I was just throwing out right. there that, you I'm know. just saying it's not, sometimes it's not covered. And oh, I don't absolutely. care about that. And we know that when we become board members, mm -hmm. there's going to be stuff that just isn't covered. 
I mean, that's why we're public servants, right? So I, 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 I hear what you're saying. Okay. Okay, so I think we've had a good discussion so far. What do we want to do? I spoke up too much. Somebody else ought to say something. I got other things on her mind, I guess. I don't know what. Well, as I said a few minutes ago, we can present both of these at the meeting. We can present one or the other. Uh, I, I, I think that should be that's what we're choosing from, unless somebody wants to offer some alternative plan. Uh, I think it's unfair to try and predict what would happen if you how you presented it because anything could happen. Well, I guess some of the things that I've mentioned here, you know, some of the arguments that were presented against reducing it to 16, like, you know, that like to me. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that they really are as valid as, as, they, as they might seem on the surface, and I think that's something that needs to be recognized. In, in my mind, I have, you know, if I heard a, an argument against this, reducing it to 16 that I thought was a strong argument, I probably would be more than willing to change my mind about it, but I really haven't heard that so far, so that's one, main, one of the main reasons that I probably still favor that plan. I think that's a move in the right direction for this board. I think the same logic that we apply to that was applied to the board 10 years ago when they went from 25 members down to 20. I was new on the board at that time and I don't remember all the arguments that were presented. I'm not sure if you do, Charlie. I don't, I don't think there was much argument, quite frankly. I think we just kind of like step in line. I guess we ought to do that. Well, I don't. What, anybody else remember? I don't remember the arguments about it. I don't think it was even questioned. Uh, you two are the only ones that were there. No, okay. Okay. I don't think maybe we discussed it very long at all. I could be wrong, but I remember it certainly being that way. But. Yeah. Like I said, I I I, I know I was new on the board then. I don't recall that much either. But, but I, the, the thing that I recall the most about it was that after it was approved, uh, Troy Crumwitty and Rod Copus and I, we rearranged all the desks in the room here. We, they were re we rearranged them just the way they are today. They've stayed that way for 10 years. That, I remember that very well. I can remember some of the comments later, but I won't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> I had a few of my own, but that's all right. I don't want to put my again today. Well, we need to make some decision, guys. What do we want to do? That's a ball. I agree with that. And you said one is going to be shot. <laughs> You're sooner wind up with the third one. I mean, we can do that. We can label one A and one B, and have the people vote on which do you want, one A or do you want B? And it'll probably come out as a hybrid B number C. Or... Well, I think I think to me the guiding the guiding factor for, for me, and I would think most of you would have earned that same boat, is that whatever we come up with should be budget neutral. Not to result in any increase in cost. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, if they want to increase the cost, they're the ones that do it. So they're going to have to find the money to do it. Yeah. We, we still don't have the, the budget for next year figured out exactly even. We're getting close. That's one reason why we ought to have it finalized before we get for done with the budget hearings. Well, it has to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah it should be. Absolutely. As far as I'm concerned, at the next meeting, we should we should make some decision one way or another, with the proviso that if, if when the census figures come out, there's any reason that we have to realign the districts, we have to see what what yeah. that. 
if we go to a different number of if we go to a different number of representatives, we're going to have to do a, a lot of drawing on the board. Well, on the map. If the census numbers dictate that, if we're staying with four districts, I mean, we're staying with four districts the same as we've had for the last ten years, the same same district boundaries. If the census numbers prove that we can't do that any longer, that we have to change those boundaries, then that that would be something that we have to look at. You know, whether the rest whether the rest of the ordinance would stay exactly the same, I can't say hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure it would. I think ten years ago the only change they made was Loader Township was in district so they, was there, were, there were five districts though. That's right, there was. Five districts with five people in it. So we went to four districts with five. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. So uh, we're staying with the same four districts with either one of these plans. Same boundary line, so forth. If the census numbers, when we finally get them, Regan tells me she still hasn't heard anything. So, you know, we're, we're patiently waiting. <laughs> I looked at the website uh, yesterday and there wasn't anything. So. I Let me make it a little more clear. I move that we send both to the full board. Second that. Okay, and and then we're going to get approval for one or the other, depending on the census numbers when they come out, or we're going to. Well, if you want to wait for the census numbers, then we are. Why are we doing any of it? So that we have something done. If the census numbers mean that we have to modify something, then I would hope that the modification wouldn't be that great. We probably still have to vote on the bottom. It's not likely that that's going to happen. Everything that we know right now indicates that it won't. If but you have a modification, you're throwing somebody in a different district than what they were, so you'd have to vote on the wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily affect the number of board members it wouldn't necessarily no, affect know, the number of districts or any of that it just might mean drawing enough lines a little differently we want to try and keep the lines by township because that's the simplest and easiest way particularly for the people that work in the clerk's office in the elections department how about the people going to the polls they won't know which way to go well, they have a voter's card that tells them where to go. And you're not going to look at it. You're going to go where you went last time. <laughs> There's places that, hey, they change, the, they change the location of the polls sometimes, too, and the people go to the wrong place. Well, all those things happen. Right. There's no way you can control that kind of stuff. Uh, the easiest thing to do is leave the boundaries the same if you can. Yep. Okay, well, we got a motion to send both of these to the full board. Do we have a second? Yes, Charlie. Okay, is there any further discussion? Any none, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Yes. Marion? Yes. Hall? Yes. Barr? Yes. Young? Yes. Okay, we got that done. Next on the agenda, where's my agenda? <clears throat> update on sexual harassment training. I sent out um, updates earlier this week. We are currently sitting at 83% completion. Um, most of the departments are 100% complete. Still have some board members that have not completed it, um, as well as some of the part time um, personnel who have not completed it as well. Do we have any of the board members that haven't completed present here today? Yes, you do. Yes, we do. <laughs> maybe, we can, maybe we can get something done and get that taken care of, hopefully. We need to get this thing done. It's, it's not a, anything that we're excited about. The, the law says we got to do it. Uh, let's get it done. Okay. It's already July. What did it take? Half an hour at the most? About 40, 45 minutes, depending on the person. Okay. Moving on, reviewing the Iroquois County Personnel Manual. 
Last month we made it through the first 40 pages. But today we'll begin on page 41. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Page 41 is an exit survey. My question is, do we do this? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Uh, why do we only do it sometimes? It's dependent on the department head and whether or not they um, would like it filled out. A couple of departments that do, but for the most part, we don't. So the ones that do must feel like they get some benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason that we need to make any changes with it then? No. Okay. Move on to page 43. What I had there was uh, under responsibility on item H and then under the procedure it talks about the county board office. That, is that what we want stated there? We went through this at the last meeting about what is the county board office? I would um, suggest that it be changed to the county board executive assistant as she handles all the HR. Okay, make that change then. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions with that? Page 44. Final pay. We talked about this last time about when you pay, give somebody their final pay, and uh, the question came up about well, if they still had some county property, and they you have to return that before you give them the pay. They said, no, you got to give them the pay. Well, here it says that's not the case. Under item H on responsibility. Excuse me. Under policy. It says an exit, exiting employee's final paycheck upon return of all Iroquois County property will be processed. So, which is it? By law, you gotta pay them. Yeah, by law, you have to pay them. I think that's just a. Um, so then we have to just we have to strike out that that one little part there. Now, if you I mean, wanted to get real tough on it, you should say if if. Iroquois County property is not return charge and will be filed for theft. If you really want to get mean about it, mm -hmm. but, but I think that's to up to the state's attorney to follow through. Right. Well, I suppose it would depend on what the property is. If it's somebody's potential with an erasure on it, you might not be too concerned, but if it's a deputy with a police car, you might. <laughs> you might have a little, little thought about it. Uh, I mean, you could say, uh, you know, if something if that charges may be filed. Well, I think if there, if it's something major like that, then it's a criminal act, and then that would be up to the state's attorney to go ahead and do it. So I don't think we need to cover it. Well, I guess I would agree with that. The only thing by covering it is simply that if the employee looks at this and they you know it's so restated, it might be, it puts the thought in his head that, hey, I better they expect me to give this back. If it's a computer or whatever, you know, I mean, there's all different kinds of county property that could be involved here. I wouldn't say, I would just leave it as is, honestly, because it does not say that we are not going to give them their final paycheck. It just simply states that their final paycheck upon return of all equipment, or, or I'm sorry, property will be processed in accordance with the normal payroll schedule. Um, I bet if you went into a court of law, a judge would disagree with you. But I'm not a judge. about that? It doesn't say anything about it being required or you will not get it. It just says upon return. I would always suggest that placement is key. Um, kind of the same camp as what John was saying. 
um, I would suggest that you do put something in there or keep the language just move it around a little bit. Um, at the end of the day, depending on the value of the product, you're going to have to have Jim Devine probably go through that process regardless, and he's going to tell you if it's, from a litigation standpoint, if it's really worth the county's time and money to go through that type of process. Couldn't you see if legal action will be taken if property is not received by us? Simple as that. And whatever that is, the state attorney does. You have any thoughts about that, Myron? Uh, you have to pay them. You have to pay them their final check. They right, can't right. keep the final check, but um, we've we've seen it consistent with sending invoices for um, if somebody's not returning or whatever the property is. So there's a set value on the property, and then you send out the invoice, and then you can send collections after that. You know, so that that I've seen done on several accounts. So if you wanted to add something in there that would say that, uh, you know, you will be billed for equipment not returned or something of that nature, that's that's consistent with what I see. That's how fire departments are. If why you walk off with that equipment, you're going to get billed for it. Why don't we see so, if we can work some language out for that too? So then after, leave it as leave it as is an existing employee's final paycheck upon return of all Iroquois County property will be processed in accordance with the normal payroll schedule. Exiting employees who do not return property will be billed. Will be what? Billed. Will be billed. Or invoices. And further later. action will be taken to retrieve it. I would suggest to uh, strike upon return of all your Floyd County property in that sentence. Exiting employees will be expected to return all your County property and if not returned will be invoiced. Why don't, why don't you make a note to work on that? We can revisit it on our next meeting. Make a note to come back. To Send Roger Bard after him. <laughs> Probably should include the invoice for the amount of said property because it's be saying invoice, well, that just kind of crosses it up in here. Have you seen where the, if, they, if there are any collection costs, uh, are they question, yeah. uh, liable for the collection? It's like uh, anything else. If, you, if you're delinquent on a bill, then they pay a collection. If they don't pay, they don't return. They don't return equipment. If they don't pay for what the amount was invoiced for the property, then you can put it in your tax return. Somebody collection would be similar like what you have to do. Okay. We'll keep going here so we can get as much done as possible. Uh, page 45, I do not have anything on that page. Does anybody have anything there? If not, we'll go to 46. Under responsibility number three, it states it is the county board, B states it is the department head. Which is it? I didn't think the county board had this authority. So that's talking about. It is, says it is uh, harassment. It says it is the responsibility of the Iroquois County Board to ensure all work environments are free from harassment. That's what I'm referring to when I said I don't know that the County Board has that authority. B, it is the responsibility of the department head to ensure that his or her department provides a work environment that is free from harassment. I believe that's correct. Yeah, and I, the but way I I'm understanding it is that A is there for hierarchy purposes. If for some odd reason the department head or supervisor is the one doing harassment, an employee can contact a county board member for action. I mean, they're not going to go to the person that's harassing them to report them. Well, let's say, for example, that Brian was harassing one of her employees. No, 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 no. Let's not go there. I, I'm she doesn't like to be used. I, I'm standing up for you, 
you were used as an example, and I just corrected Thank you. Him. It's our parks and districts manager <laughs> was harassing someone. Whatever. <laughs> so anyway, we, we don't we don't have authority to tell any of them what to do. No, but you do have some authority as to the only authority that we have is the first country make the decision on where and how the case should be handled. If it's a department head, we have authority. If it's an elected official, then it actually is covered more under the state statute. If it's a department head that reports to this board, right. board that's correct. But. but if it's an elected official, then it probably falls under the same statute that requires sexual harassment training. Well, it doesn't necessarily, it may not be sexual harassment. Well, it, I guess, yeah. is it sexual harassment or is it just harassment? In this specific, it, it relates to it's any harassment, harassment, physical, yeah. sexual. Yeah. 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 So would it be better to, to dash the word free from harassment and put in there, have the current policies in place to avoid harassment, some of that nature, referring to a policy that you adopted that, that uh, prevents harassment from occurring. That's what this policy is supposed to be doing. I hate to be the exception in the room, but I am. I'm an ETSB employee and I manage county employees. So I cannot report to the Illinois County Board. So that's something that you may want to take into account here. So, what would be the chain of command that if you were abusing your power somehow? The county board would need to speak with the ETSB. And the same would happen with the health department. Mm -hmm. yeah. Put them under the board and discuss it with their board. Okay, so if you're if you're overseeing County employees, and we're trying to safeguard those employees, but we don't have a way to discipline you. How do we do that? You have to go through his board. What if his board refuses to do anything? Then how do we safeguard our employees? By <laughs> whom against whom? By the county against? said the one board and director um, if they're not going to fix the problem the county can't sue us so so then it would have to be the individual themselves suing mm -hmm. and then at that point the county could be sued because we haven't taken action mm -hmm. to correct the situation so just, just knock it off <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have any challenges with that. I, I think by the county board showing the action of speaking with the ETSB, since I would be their employee, and the same would go for the health department, that would show the county's portion of action. Um, this would all be Jim Devine related at the end of the day, because he'd be the one that would have to defend it as your attorney. Um, Does the ETSB have a separate attorney? No. So then if we, if we approach the ETSB board with Jim Devine, then him as their legal counsel would more than likely advise them to do something, I would hope. That would be my expectation. To be honest, I don't think you would need Jim Devine in that case. It, this is my personal opinion. You as a board contacting the ETSB saying I'm doing something inappropriate, violating sexual harassment laws. This doesn't have or, anything to yeah, do with I mean, sexual could harassment be that, or harassment in yeah. any way, shape, or you, form. You you scheduling somebody differently from others because you don't like them or something. All that could be considered harassment. We it's a good example. We'd also have the union to work with on that situation too, but that is a good example of. So I, I cannot see that the ETSB would allow any employee, myself or anybody else that they would hire, to fall swift and fast on. 
Well, to the point that you're making, in those situations that involve the unions, uh, there is the procedure in place where the union member can file a grievance that will come before the county board if it can't be resolved with the department head. Right. It goes to this committee. It comes to this committee. And we have had a couple of instances in the past where there have been some things that came to this committee like that to be resolved. So, uh, but I, I, you know, I don't know if that's. I don't think that there needs to be any changes because, like I said, what I'm hearing is it all comes back to the county board. I just brought the question up for clarification. I think. I think it's. Clarified. I don't know. Do you have any comments on that, Myron, or your yeah. thoughts? It, the consistency is, is if, it, if you are the, the final, if they're going, if it's going to work its way up, you, then you have to ensure that you have a hassle-free environment. If, you can change the wording around a little bit, but at the end of the day, it still says the same, the same thing. thing. If it's a union matter, that's true. But if it's a non-union matter, that isn't necessarily the case. That's not what the procedure says right now. It's if it's a union matter. The union contract says that, right. as far as filing grievances is concerned, as to how they're to be resolved. You know, it's a step-by-step -step procedure that ultimately rests with the board, with this committee. Even a, even a non-union employee, I would think, though, would be subject to the disciplinary actions of following the board's direction. Right? Well, it, it can be, if that's, I guess, if that's what, what we want. But I guess part of the question is, we have authority to discipline an elected official. No. You don't, but and it's not necessarily saying either. that. It's just saying it's your responsibility to ensure the environments of free of harassment. So and without going into a bunch of detail, the county board can make the decision on the next step depending on a case by case variant. Well, it isn't necessarily disciplining an elected official, but it is telling them what to do. Telling them you have to stop doing something. Or you have to make some change. You can make a suggestion to stop harassing somebody. That's not a suggestion, though. When you ensure something, you're not making a suggestion. So, do you have a, a suggestion on what you would like it to say? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote the question down here because I thought it's something we should talk about and try to figure out what we want to do. Can I ask a question about the asking? Um, union contract? Do they have any specific to harassment? I believe I believe all of our union contracts are similar. There's something in there. I couldn't tell way. you specifically what it was. Because I'm looking through FOP, at least in mine, I don't have a specific clause for harassment. Because your union contract would seem you have a you have a clause in there for grievances. The grievance clauses, but I'm at some. If there's harassment, you would file a grievance, right? Mm -hmm. That would be the expectation. Well, I don't know what to suggest. I suppose we can leave it the way it is, but to me, it's, it might be something to talk to Jim Devine about as well. I don't know. I don't know if it needs clarification or whatever. It's something that hasn't come up and likely never will come up. But if it does come up, then what? I could ask a little question uh, as far as health department. Are those, how, how are they treated as employees? Are they technically Iroquois County employees that are working for the health department? There was, the there's been at least one time when health department employees filed a grievance that came to this committee. Okay. So that, that procedure is in place. Okay, page 47, the next page under item C. Does the supervisor or designee will investigate all allegations of harassment and document the allegation and all findings to the county board or state's attorney? 
I'm getting used to what we're talking about. My comment there, instead of the word or, should be the word and. Both should be, the findings should be reported to both. So that's, yeah. That's what I would say. Okay. I don't have anything on 48 or 49. Uh, the health insurance. Anybody got anything on either one of those things? Page 50, under policy, the last, very last sentence, it says employees will be required to provide proof that the time off was spent in school visitation. What is the proof they need? A note from the teacher? And should we, should we identify what the proof uh, what is the proof that you went to this uh, meeting at your, at your school? Well, when it comes to time off, isn't that at some point in there covered that it's at the discretion of the department head? Well, some of that's covered in here, it's, but it says that where we call, there's a, a, a Illinois School Visitation Rights Act that we're required to comply with. Mm -hmm. And that means it says that we're to grant each employee with children in primary and secondary school up to a total of eight hours of school visitation during the course of the normal school year to attend such events as parent-teacher conferences, student counseling, and so forth. Oh, it goes, it goes on down, and it's the last paragraph under that one is what I've read, that you're required to provide proof that the time off was spent in school. Should the school always provide them with a um, documentation that they were there if they were parent has? Or there may be a letter if it's something that's scheduled that gets sent out to the students, anything like that? I get a note from the teacher or whatever, I guess that's fine with me. I just, when I saw that, I said, well, you know, yeah. kind of silly. It said, I, I think the application of this up the top of it says your children, but if you're responsible for grandchildren, does that apply under children? It says guardian. Guardian? Or? It included it includes parents and guardians. Oh, okay. If you're a guardian, then it counts. There's more and more now all the time. Mm -hmm. Same thing on the next page on the right of me. It says the employee will provide proof of the amount of time spent in the school visitation. So, they can ask for a letter if the department requires. That's, that's what we want. That's what we need to wear it. it wouldn't be hard to do, though, would it? Mm -hmm. We'll gladly give you proof that you were there. Yeah, we'll give you your kid back. <laughs> okay, moving on to page 52, Immigration Law Compliance. My question on that is, are we doing this? Do we fill out this Employment Eligibility Verification Form I-9? Yes, we do. Okay, so everything on that page is the way it should be? Yes, sir. Okay, sounds good to me then. I want to make sure. Page 53. Is that current? Infectious diseases. And did we follow it during the COVID? There's a couple of things in here that caused me to wonder. COVID was a little bit different too, because like different guidelines you have to follow for the CDC. Team. I know. What I'm saying is, is if it differs a little bit from ours, the CDC have different guidelines than what this would be in that specific instance. 
I didn't, you know, I didn't identify any any one particular part of this, but it just seems to me that there's some things there about how how do you handle an employee that has an infectious disease? I suppose it depends a lot on what the disease is. Come down to wearing a mask. Well, it doesn't say that. But I mean, just because it's an infectious disease doesn't mean it's transmissible by. Uh, right. Air. The other part, the other part that I question is that in the second paragraph from the bottom, when a supervisor has a reasonable cause to believe that an employee is unable to perform duties assigned or is endangering the health or safety of others because of an infectious disease, he may request a fitness for duty exam to clarify the employee's condition and guide future decisions regarding employees. Such an examination would be at the expense of the county. How does that relate to HIPAA laws? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. Because this was written before they did all the HIPAA laws, and you can't ask questions. I have had an example of a previous employer where as management, we were concerned about the safety of the employees and their health. Um, essentially, what we could get was just a note from the doctor saying this individual has a complete bill of health and all of its essentials. We couldn't get information specific to if they were actually sick, what it was because of HIPAA, but they could tell us that they are capable of fulfilling their duties at work. And that's about all. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that, but I'm not fine with us paying no, for it. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you're going to pay for it or pay for it, because if you send them to the doctor, because it's employer related, when they send it to the medical insurance, it's going to say that, and then it's going to go to workers' comp, and then you mm -hmm. have workers' comp at home. So, you're going to pay for it or pay for it, whether it's the medical insurance, whether it's going through workers' comp. Um, by allowing you to pick the physician, also allows you the opportunity to work with said physician to determine a price. If, if we pick the physician and it's a physician that If it's if they do have something that's not readily tested for, and it's not the regular physician, is a is another physician going to be able to pick that up? Um, so if you go, if you want this person to solely have a physical, that sits with that right now. If lab the labs need to be drawn to really determine that, because we're talking about some type of health condition. Um, is that something the health department can potentially test for? That depends on what you're talking about. Uh, well, infectious disease could be very, very many things. It could be COVID, it could be you know, smallpox, it could be shingles. As a rule of thumb, the health department would not be able to test for any infectious disease, so I would not recommend putting, this, putting the health department as the one that would for whatever you're looking for in your policy. It was more of a curiosity. I didn't know what the health department was capable of doing. We can test for a couple of very small things, but most of the time, when we're looking for a diagnosis, you got to go to the doctor. So you'd be, so by the point you'd go, be going to a lab, I'd look at IMH. And can you require them to go to a lab? Can we strike that sentence all together and just leave it at the department head can request a fitness duty exam for clarification? Because there's been times where I've said, you know, go see your doctor, come back, bring you a note. When you're released, you can come back. I mean, do we have to include that? I mean, by law, we don't have to be at the county. We don't have to have that sentence in there about the county's expense and county selective position. Where I stand on it, they would need a note from their doctor to come back. 
Right. That's but what I'm saying is, can we strike the last sentence altogether, saying that such an examination would be at the expense of the county and conducted by a county-wide or a county-selected physician? Because technically, the sentence of before it says basically can request the um, exam to clarify that they are capable of coming back. It's my situation and concern would be you would be causing the employee an expense because if they're covered under our health insurance for the county, they're going to have to pay copay. At that point, it's not a well business; it's not a physical. They're going to have to pay that copay. Now. You could choose to pay that copay for the seven employee, which is if it's for a primary, it's twenty dollars. It's done. But if you elect a new health plan that has a sixty dollar copay, somebody's going to have to pay it. And generally, if the employee goes to the doctor, they're going to have to shell out out of pocket right there up front because it's copay. That's I mean that's generally what happens. I would just strike it all together because you're. You're putting an idea, you're, you're putting it on paper that hey, yeah. you know what? Any little hint of anything, and we say, you know, I think you should go home. Well, they're going to bring you a bill. I mean, I just don't think that sentence is necessary. Is there anything in the union contracts that cover this issue? Do you have a copy of them there? Yes, I do. I'm going to send that one to Tim. Okay. Tim had an emergency. He could yeah, I have have him clarify that yeah. if you would. I don't think that's that's just my opinion. It could be striped. Yeah. But if it says conducted by a county selected physician, well, what if this person says I want to go to my personal provider? We're going to send it to Tim for review. He'll give us the, the legal answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know if anything else related in the Felden Indicator contract aside from the coverage costs of the premium. Uh, the same thing on the next page, on page 54. Uh, under procedure, it doesn't say anything about having any kind of a note or information from a doctor saying that you can. I believe on the previous page of the policy and the fourth paragraph, one, two, three, four. Okay, so you can. There's a written statement from a physician documenting the employee's ability or inability to. Form a sign of duties without much company such notification. So, there's so you can just add on to that um, after diagnosis and provide uh, medical documentation. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, either refer back to this paragraph or, or just duplicate the what it says there by the written statement, but right mm -hmm. now it contradicts itself. Mm -hmm. Page 55. Got an additional question. I'm sorry. Uh, when we get to the point of an employee who is diagnosed as having an infectious disease that may be transmitted, transmitted in the working place, would it be worthwhile to put a list of current considered infectious diseases? Well, that we wouldn't have. No. With COVID wouldn't have been included in that. No. Well, you can no. put a list in there and say it may not be limited to. No, I, no, I think you're getting too that. far into detail. Right. You what just refer, is, refer to the county or refer to the health department for CDC recommendations. The insurance you company is saying no. Well, we're, I'm not putting it down, but I'm just saying in general. You probably don't want to put a list down, even if that says not limited to, because the list of infectious diseases that are defined by IDPH and CDC too so. Mm -hmm. And um, any doctor that that person would have been diagnosed by keeps up on that. You know, they know what an infectious disease is. And they know what um, they know what a person could potentially have that is not infectious. So, so you know, if the doctor says it's infectious, it's infectious. That's probably what you do. Okay, are we done with that one then? 
Moving on to page 55. First question I have there, we call this an introductory period. The reason we don't call it a probationary period. Uh, if I had to guess, it has something to do with the FOP contracts. Uh, I mean, the reason I'm asking is because it just seems to me that calling it a probationary period is more descriptive of what it really is. I believe we're using that in other areas of the town here, are we not? I never heard it called an introductory period before other than right here. I mean, I, we can call it whatever we want. I'm just, the reason I'm asking is just to do uh, it as clear to everybody and you know, the meaning of it is more easily understood what I'm asking about. Now, you need contracts as called probationary. Is there a definition difference between the two terms? No, but as Eric just pointed out, it's called a probationary period in the union contract, so it would be. We can change it. You know, I mean, it'd be consistent to use the same term. Mm -hmm. Then in the paragraph uh, six, responsibility, I believe we're talking about the county board office again under item C. That'd be the county board executive assistant that we want to use there at the bottom of the page. keep track of it by you know putting that information into the employees files but as far as it being the responsibility to initiate an evaluation form I think that should be up to the department heads. I don't mean somebody needs to say okay the, the period's up a week from tomorrow or whatever to start your evaluation yeah, there's some, no, whenever, we can whenever keep track of that for everybody half the time we have to fight with department heads to get the new hire information. <laughs> I shouldn't say fight, that's not the correct word. But no, I follow up. I understand what you're saying. I think the same, so you the could same cross, thing over on, on the next page, some places talking about the county board office. I don't know if I wrote that down. I didn't see. No, not there. Item D on the next page. Department heads should discuss the employee's performance and documentation at the county board office before terminating the employee. Okay. Department heads wants to terminate the employee. They don't need to discuss the office first. They, need they just need to inform us. Yeah. So that needs to be changed also. We'll just change discuss to and four. On page 57 and 58, I just said, is this okay? And basically what I'm saying is just the way we want it to be. Investigation. The procedure to be followed when any kind of investigation is made uh, because of drug use, theft, misappropriation of funds, confidential information, or other wrongful activities. There's a whole series of procedures here to do. It talks about the contacting the county board office again. up to 
same question there. What is the county board office? Is it the county board executive assistant? The county board itself? You can change the title. Under section two and policy, as far as workplace arrest, I'm just concerned the county will investigate any complaint received. I can't hear you, Eric. You're pointing the wrong way there when you're talking. Sorry, I'm reading. Um, under first paragraph, section two, starting in the second sentence there, as far as workplace arrest and is concerned, the county will investigate any complaint it receives, even if the complainant requests that nothing be done. Feel that this should be already covered under the harassment policy? Should it be mentioned again? Is, does that's, it feel redundant? I think that's something that needs to say in um, just speaking, in, Myra, you can correct me, but um, it has to be known that whether or not they want anything to be done, we have an obligation to investigate it. I think I don't think there's anything wrong in repeating something as long as it's consistent with what was stated before. And I'm fine with it either way. I figured I'd bring it up as a point of conversation since we've already discussed harassment in these ones. Right, so but I, I I understand what you're saying, but I'm like I said, uh, to me repeating it is as long as it's consistent. I don't I don't see any problem with it. It just underscores the importance of it as much as anything. But anyway, same thing on the other side on page 58. I and mean, you know, this is all good. This is what we're doing. Employees got to sign this thing, saying that you know, every new employee signs this, right? We have a record of every employee having signed one of these. So we're happy with what it says. Yes. It's worded a little bit differently, but we can we can utilize this rule instead. It's about the same. There's no problem with making changes if we that's what we're here for. We need to make changes. This one actually about what we're doing. We want to get everything same page and same keyword. This is actually um, just fine. This one's actually better. So we can utilize this one from going okay. forward. Okay. Page 59, job descriptions. Under responsibility, number A. It is the responsibility of the Iroquois County Board to enforce job descriptions for the department head supervisors. Is that right? Are we enforcing job descriptions? Yes, you can, if need be. I'm asking the question. And what does the County Board do to enforce? My understanding that these job descriptions are presented to the county board for approval. Is that correct? Um, but as far as enforcing them goes, we don't go around these departments and say, are you doing these jobs right? <laughs> but you do do performance reviews. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, this is just talking about for the department heads and supervisors. So you guys do keep us on one department heads and supervisors, right? And I'm sure at some point the job descriptions were approved. Um, I can't speak in the last two years that I've been here, well, but I mean, this gets back I mean, to went the, through for the finance manager one when we changed from having a chief deputy and then back to where we are. And I mean, that all went through the county board. Well, for the, for, the, for, the, for the department head supervisors that report to the county board, I guess I can I can say that it's probably that's statutory. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about elected officials. Elected officials, right. your job yeah, is like, all statutory. Right. But it can, it can 
they can be re rewritten by the same that if you want. I think it's fine as is. That's my opinion. If you can't do anything with elected officials anyway, so they're covered under statutory. One reason we started that with the department is a report to the board. That's when they should go into their job description and that'll post their right. their adhering to but the job description. I'm just but I'm what I'm saying is should we separate those people from the elected officials? Elected officials you're not in charge of as much as you are as an employee. Elected officials are in charge of every employee in their department. Well, I don't tell I didn't them. Say it really work. We don't it's tell them. Nice. We don't. We don't have anything to do with those job descriptions other than to make you approve them. I they don't enforce them. Yeah. I would, this is talking about enforcement. Not, not okay. Approval. I would say, since we don't have authority over them, to put it in there is not necessary because what does it accomplish? You know, and then there's no limit to what you can put in there that we have no authority over. Mm -hmm. So since we don't have authority over them, I don't know that it needs to be in there. Okay. I don't think you should put it in. Uh, if you put it in, it gives the assumption you do have authority over them. Why would you put it in? Well, I'm, I mean, like I said, I'm asking questions, but I think the purpose is to try and make this as clearly yeah. understood by everybody that reads it as possible, mm -hmm. whoever that person might be. That's a good idea. Good, good goal. When I, look, when I read through these pages, I see these things all. Oh, you know, is that, do I understand it, or you know, how does it appear? So that's why I'm asking the question. Okay, we'll go to page 60. You know, on page 60, John, it says, uh, backing up to that, you might have these a little bit backwards, but uh, you're, you're, you're basically saying on page 60 that you're providing them with a job description, and it's approved. The descriptions are, uh, are approved by the county board, and then backing up to that page, it says that you enforce the descriptions. So basically, you give them the descriptions that they need to follow, which comes from you, right? I, my understanding is that the department has writes a job description and we review it and approve it. Yeah, I mean, essentially. And that's, Either way, you approve uh, it. You can uh, request that it be changed or left the same. Under B on page 60, it says job descriptions will be reviewed as needed for changes which may have taken place since the last review. My question is, who's going to review it? County office. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, it brings up again with the finance office that you know when that all got changed around, that you know it was written and brought to the board for review and changes. I understand that, but I'm just saying it was a, it was needed at the time. Said here, who's doing the review? Question popped into my head. Am I supposed to do this reviewing? The buck, buck stops at the top. That's you. Maybe the highway committee is supposed to be doing all this reviewing. That'd be fine with me. You're too busy out on the highway. <laughs> well, we don't care who does the reviewing, just so it's done. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's needed. You know, if you really want to put somebody down, it would either be the chairman or the policy and procedure mm -hmm. committee. 
we're going to review every job description in the county. Well, how often do they get changed? It doesn't say anything about change. It just says as needed. It says job descriptions will be reviewed as needed for changes which may have taken place since so the last review. If you'd uh, like, we can put by the policy, you know, add by the policy of the chief committee. No, I don't. To clarify. I don't want, to, I don't want that response. You want to do it? No. I think well, I'm not going to do anything. He doesn't want it. <laughs> he doesn't want it. Your committee will just give it to him. We got enough to do right now. It's already. It's I already think you're okay when it says as needed. needed, so you can make the decision as needed for changes and as needed as to who needs to be the one reviewing which description. Because there's a wide range of job descriptions. For instance, I'm not going to review. You know, like you guys would review the my position per se. I would take a look at her job description per se. So I, I think you're covered by what it says as needed for changes. You can make a decision if you need to review it. I mean, to me, uh, what I what I would like to do, I guess, is that if we have these performance reviews with the with the different department heads, the review that would be one of the topics we could cover there. So that would be policy and procedure. Well, that's fine, <laughs> but that's that limited that limits it to those seven people. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And going beyond that, the departments that are under the authority of the elected officials, or like 911 and the mm -hmm. health department, all that, they do that themselves. Yep. And if they need to make changes, they can bring the changes to the county board for approval, final approval. That's fine. But they're the ones that should do the reviewing, mm -hmm. not not the county board, not not mm -hmm. policy and procedure. So that's, it should be that's done what as I, needed. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying in here. There should be some language to clarify who's doing the reviewing, who's doing you know, this other part. That's mm -hmm. what if I you were to do that, then you would have to list, you know, let's Everything. clarify reviews. Okay, so the health department is going to be reviewed by the health department board in 911. It just generally says will be reviewed as needed yeah. for changes. Because with the health department, they'll have the board. They have reviewing their, yeah. D, reviewing mm -hmm. her heads, reviewing their, you know, yeah. and we you don't want to, to make that. You have to get into detail The health department there. doesn't bring their job descriptions to here to review anything. No, they don't have to. No. Neither does 911. I think you're talking, about, I'm talking about the seven people that report to this board, to, to, this, you know, to this committee. Those are the job descriptions that I think logically we should be, this committee should be reviewing as a part of their, their review. So again, do you want to add at the end of that since the last review by the finance or by the policy and procedure committee? Or do you want to leave it as is? I'll think about it and talk okay. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess uh, when you hire somebody new, do the job descriptions change often, or are you? No, like the for? job descriptions for deputy clerk and the county clerk's office, it's generic, so mm -hmm. it doesn't say specifically what they're going to be doing, but it says all other duties as assigned. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they've changed as far as what people do in the office, there isn't anything that's specific in the job description. So it, it um, They're I, open enough that it's not a problem. Yeah, no, I mean, not a problem at all um, because of that, all of their duties as assigned. <laughs> Same situation for the you know, telecommunicators. I mean, that, that's a wonderful I mean, I think, I think the job description says that the employee must be able to walk, talk, yeah, that sort of thing. It's very generic. Like Lift over so many pounds, have basic computer skills. Right. I, I understand all that and agree with it. I'm just wanting some clarification. Sure. It's black sure. and white, that, so that there's no misunderstanding. Or you don't have three people pointing the finger at one another and saying, "No, it's your job. No, it's your <coughs> job." You know. Well, and I think that's the department has. They're all pointing at you, Joe. Sure <laughs> their office is running. I think too many holes in me from being pointed at right now. I can't think anymore. 
Well, you've got an iron shield right there. Yeah. I need one. Okay, page 61. Jury duty. I don't have anything there. Does anybody else have anything with jury duty? Court appearances? And now page 63. Level of absence, bereavement. Doesn't say anything in here about proof. <coughs> when you go to the school conference, you have to bring a note from the teacher. Well, I think in this case, most bereavements are either listed on the website, over the radio, or in the paper. And you don't necessarily want to say, okay, bring me proof. Well, I guess I would agree with that, but if somebody wants to abuse the privilege, can they do so? <coughs> well, I'm sure, but then as the department head, you... My sister you know, Ellen California just died. I need to go. Well, then as the department head, I'm going to say, you know, well, question it a little bit. And, I mean, details they're, they're, make taking, an informative decision. they're taking their personal time off, right? It's not like it's paid time off. It's with pay. Oh, it is. Because when you get into grandmother, grandfather, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, I mean, use up to three sick days or vacation days to attend funeral service. But if it's immediate, an employee's spouse, father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, mother in law, father in law, I'm sure that if an employee abused that privilege and it was it was found out and determined that's ground for dismissal. But I'm not sure that anything like that's ever happened. But I just again just bring it up. I mean, even if in this day and age, even if it was in California, you, could you can go online and look it up. Yeah. Okay. And I would also say that you know your employees you know their families you know where they live but you know what i mean like yeah, I, I, I think it's kind of a far reach to think if, that someone's going to i would that. think if you didn't trust your employees they wouldn't be employed there very long right right i i just i i think that that is i mean i i think this policy is good as it's written <laughs> that's fine with me Page 64, I don't have anything on that page, or 65. Family leaves, medical life. Basically exactly how it's written. Page 66, top of the page. Family leave time. Iroquois County has the responsibility to interpret this policy and to decide any issue. Who in the world is Iroquois County? Guy lives down the road. <laughs> At the top of the page, there are, both, there are two sentences that talk as Iroquois County. Who's Iroquois County? How about Lacey? She's Iroquois County. She can describe it. Right? That's John and Jack. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I would say Iroquois County Board would be more appropriate. Okay. Uh, do you want this to go directly to the full board, or should this be something that should fall into the policy procedures committee's lap at the beginning? Well, I think if it says the Iroquois County Board, I'm probably comfortable with that, meaning that it would come to this committee. But if you want, I, I don't have an objection to saying the Iroquois County Board Policy Procedure Committee. That, provides further clarification that's what we're looking for I think and, you know, to me some, anybody picks this thing up and wants to understand what it means they've got to be spell stuff out pretty carefully 
Okay, all the way up to page 79, I do not have any questions now, I, other than, is this correct? All these forms about family, medical leave rights, and responsibilities. Are they correct, and are we using them? Um, they look pretty accurate. I'll double check them, um, but I believe they come right off of the, or right from the FMLA website. So I'll double check that they're current. Because whenever we have somebody that requests, <laughs> I know Amanda just goes online and prints them out. The current ones. Page 79. Question I have is the list of paid holidays correct? Can we just add some new paid holiday? Uh, what was that? Juneteenth. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't, the contracts don't reflect that yet, so I don't know if we will. They will. Uh, surprised we haven't heard from them yet to amend them. Whether they reflect it or not, you still have to pay it, right? No. If you only have to pay it when it falls on the weekend. If it falls on the weekend, you don't. But I think the union contracts will have to be amended to to reflect that, but is there any other holiday? Like, for example, General Election time. Day. Mm -hmm. um, and then that is also changing. As far as we always follow the state calendar for holidays that are that we have time off on. Obviously, bargaining units have their um, list as well. Um, but I believe the state calendar is taking because we get Columbus Day also is that listed in here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Top second column. I just see Veterans Day. Not right here in mine. I have it. Mm -hmm. You got Columbus mm -hmm. Day in here? Yeah, I have well, uh, I have good an updated list, I guess. I have New Year's Day, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, Lincoln's birthday, Washington's birthday, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving Day, Friday after Thanksgiving Day, half day on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Oh, New Year's Eve day is in my. Yeah, I got New Year's Eve day too. <laughs> oh, I was at well, New Year's day. day. <laughs> I don't have I don't have Lincoln's birthday and George Washington's. I just got President's day. Right. Um, See, so the marketing has so, several differences. Um, I suppose. You, may, may, you probably yeah. need to make a note to up, make, update that list and prepare a new sheet for everybody. But anyway, I believe the state holiday calendar is mixing Columbus Day and doing Election Day every year. Every year? I believe. Well, every year there's a month, which we get that off anyway. But um, I can't remember 100% for sure. I'm pretty sure it's Columbus Day. So. Okay, on page 80, which continues on with this, are we following all of these things? And is this co everything correct there? The county board office? I, thought, I, mean, I don't know if you want to change that. department heads turn in their time sheets, which is considered the record of quality leave. The only thing I didn't, I had a question on which wasn't included in here, and maybe somewhere else in the book I haven't gotten that far yet, but when we talk about paid days off, is it personal day something that's included here or not? On this, on this section. Six days, you get vacation days, you get personal, one personal day. Like Mr. Sacy, about every month he takes a personal day. Every month, right? I 
I, if you want me to fill that extra space, I can. I, I, I mean, again, I, I don't know if the personal day is included in somewhere else in this book or not. But you have a personal day policy on second to the last. It's a paid day off, so I just why why I wondered if it should be included with the holiday, not included somewhere else. Yeah, it's paid one forty one. Personal day, it's the policy number ten sixty seven. Yeah. Okay. Since this is regarding pay, and we've had an issue with pay for a county board member, is this where we want to put that in? Um, that they can. Can you? I. Okay. So Myron, here's the situation. We had a board member who did not turn in any timesheets for over a year, claiming their mileage and their per diem decided that after a year he wanted to go ahead and turn them in and get paid so you had already gone past the budget year I mean we ended up it got approved to pay but going forward can we do a policy limiting the number of days they have to turn in such time sheets like a time frame okay. yes like you have to make a claim within a time frame yeah right and, and we can legally do that because technically then they would be not getting paid for work essentially yeah. i mean i i i'm gonna have to check with him yeah that. i would that I would seem a gray area that would have to be a thing especially with budget i mean it would be great you to have, have a time frame right because it was after not only after the budget year it was after the audit yeah 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 i mean i i think that it would be within legally your rights to put it in there but yeah can do that though you know what i mean well, yeah i don't know it's a gray area Maybe yeah, we because then you would have to go back and amend your your budget, right? No, I get all that, but are we legally not paying somebody for their quote unquote work that they right. so I guess. Well, yeah. Other, so other board members have not taken. So exactly. if after a certain period of time, is it going to be assumed that they have decided not to take their pay? Yeah, we'll let him look into it because I just yeah. legally it's just it, I don't know. It seems to me like it's just something that we should make a little policy ourselves. Well, but I approved it because we didn't we have, have anything to say in the or day. Which is why, you know, I brought it up to, yeah, to see. Right. Yeah, I'll ask. Amanda yeah, asked me and I said it was something to talk to the treasurer or the do. state's attorney about to see what their opinions were. Is that for you? Are you aware of it? They can offer opinions, but uh, again, I think it's well, I'd love to have a time frame. You get three months, you know, turn them in, we're done. I can't wait. <laughs> well, and uh, it, no, it, it's, not. it's not like you have to physically turn in a sheet. Amanda said you could email mm -hmm. her, whatever. Mm -hmm. You could call her. Just has to have your signature. Yes. <coughs> Still I'll send a text with it. <laughs> okay, we, we made it phone. up to page 80. That's as far as I got. So okay. next time we'll go up to page 120 at least. Okay? Do your homework. I move we adjourn. No, we're not that far. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting close. <laughs> we got some correspondence. Let's look at that later. This is from UCCI. It's all stuff that's already happened. So concerned about. This is a thank you note from Joe Alexander, who we thank us for allowing him to come and talk and public comment at the last point. This is a letter here that I'll pass around. Something I don't agree with, but something writing us together about what they want to do. Pass this down there, and pass this down there if you would.
I don't see any claims today, which is great. I told that EMA guy if he filed any more claims, we're going to shoot him. So, taking my word for it. Policy on that? Is that harassment? Maybe we should review that. This meeting has not been recorded. <laughs> Do we have any old business to come before the committee this morning? Do you have any new business? Mr. Alt? I will entertain your motion. I move we adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. We go. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Meeting is adjourned. Did we have a better chairman years ago? We wanted to abolish the